Hello and welcome to our From the Top series, where we talk to the chief executives of the aerospace top companies. And we're with a company today that has always kind of in the past been a little bit in the background, but actually of more than something like 165 years that they've been in the business, um, it's been doing some great stuff. And we're with Tony Wood, the chief executive of Megit. Tony, is it fair to say that uh, Mega is, is out of the shadows, but you've been getting on with doing the job over those years without ever jumping up in to take all the glory? No, well, you know, Mega's been around for a long time, as you say, 1860, um, uh, altimeters for hot air balloons originally with uh, Negretti and Zambra, which today is part of our avionics business. But uh, the company's grown substantially. It's a very acquisitive company over the years, and uh, we've been driving hard to refine the strategy to really get a strong organic growth to the company as well. And uh, uh, we're very clear going forwards, we're an aerospace defense and selected energy company. And uh, uh, in order to take that position on, on the world stage, obviously we're a bigger company today and uh, that gives us uh, many opportunities to grow and uh, become a bigger player in the industry. So Megit's involved in so many of those programs, both in civil and defense. Can you tell us some of the highlights of those? Yeah, well, Megat's involved in some 69,000 aircraft that are flying today, and we have a footprint from either sensing systems, control systems, advanced engine composites, or all our fuel containment systems uh, on just about every one of them. So uh, uh, it, it's a very nicely balanced portfolio. About half of the business is commercial aerospace, about 35% defense. So uh, um, we are literally uh, present on just about every platform that you'll see in an air show like today. And talking those figures of civil and defence, I mean, I've always thought of Megit as that perfectly balanced company with the, with both sides of that, but also the geographic markets of the United States and the rest of the world nicely balanced. You've always been kind of shielded against problems, and so one's gone up as the other one's gone down. But in recent years, we've seen that challenge where the defence industry has suffered a lot at the same time as oil prices have dropped, which hit civil. How did Megit cope through that? It's really bad times? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a bit choppy over recent years, obviously. And uh, I, I guess uh, not only the drop in oil price and, and the softening in defense spending, uh, which is, is clearly now returning, the world's not getting any safer, um, but also at a peak time for us in terms of R&D. So we've been renewing the portfolio of products, uh, obviously, as the legacy programs start to retire. And uh, that all happened at the same time. So a very, a very challenging period, but one where it was a steady hand at the tiller, really, to keep the investment line going. And we're now starting to see the benefit of that. And also the company being uh, much more front footed on, it, on its technology and its investment for the future. Now, you also divested a, a number of businesses. What was the strategy behind that? Yeah. So historically, we were a holding company, and uh, uh, that meant we were in a very wide number of markets, a very acquisitive company. And uh, increasingly, we've been on a journey to become a much more integrated business. And uh, really, the decision we've taken is that we will exit a lot of those non-core businesses in our automotive, healthcare, and also some light industrial businesses. So we've sold seven businesses over the last 18 months. Um, and really, the uh, the, uh, the crowning of, uh, of our strategy to get to a much more integrated business is an organizational change that will take us to be very focused around our, around our four end markets. So that cuts in on the 1st of January. And uh, that'll, that'll organize the group around our airframe system customers, our engine system customers, and our energy and equipment uh, customers with aftermarket as a, a separate business. So um, from six divisions to four and a, a very customer focused uh, organization going forwards. One question we like to ask CEOs as we finish these programs is what is it that wakes you up in the middle of the night? Um, I mean, we're a global business. We have a lot of operations around the world. I guess the challenge for almost all of us at the show at the moment is uh, a nice challenge to have. Uh, we're going through a period of growth on both engine programs and airframe programs that's unprecedented. I think outside wartime, this is a period of growth for the industry that's uh, exciting. And that, that certainly keeps the blood flowing as we're uh, obviously industrializing all of those uh, great inventions and designs that we've been investing in over the last few years. So that's our focus uh, and the main topic of Obviously, that we've been focusing on at the show, uh, and then the technology for the future. Uh, the technology race <coughs> never stops, so uh, a lot of ongoing investment in technology to stay ahead. Uh, so, Tony, you're telling me you sleep well at night. I, I sleep pretty well. It's been a long day. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on Thanks the program. So